All right, this is a video on how to successfully bleed the air out of a system, a pump system, after it's been worked on. What I mean when I say worked on is that the pump has been repaired or it has been replaced. You could also say this is the same procedure that you'd use at startup. So the idea behind this is that you know, at startup or after repair, these lines, this line right here going into the suction side of the pump does not have any water in it. So we want to bleed the water out of it. And then there, is, uh, uh, there isn't any water in this discharge line going up here also. So we want to bleed the air out of it and have as much water as possible in those lines. And the big reason we want to do that is this pump is a water lubricated pump. It's a positive displacement pump that has pistons in there. And within, around the piston there is water and that water is used to lubricate all parts internally to the pump. There is no oil in this pump at all. Many other positive displacement pumps do use oil for lubrication. This one does not. The advantage of this particular pump though is it is pure stainless steel throughout and it can be used on very pure deionized water and that is the application here. It is a Danfoss PAHT2 the smallest of Danfoss's high pressure misting pumps. At maximum capacity it puts out about a half a gallon a minute which equals to about 500 pounds per hour. There are four different size variations of this pump meaning this pump in, in the same casing has four different model numbers a PAHT 3.2, a 4.0, and a 6.0. But let's go back to bleeding the air out of this pump system. This is going to be relatively easy compared to some of the pumps that we'll see later on. It's pretty straightforward, and here we go. The most important aspect of this is to get all the air out of this pump housing. There happens to be a bleed port that's on top, and it's right there. It's a small little screw that's on the top of the pump, and that will bleed air out of the pumping system. So what happens is this is the incoming water supply here, and the water comes down through this line into the bottom of the pump and the water comes up through the pump housing and the casing and starts to come out this this uh, bleed hole right there. Now one of the things that makes this easy to bleed this particular system is one it doesn't have an input solenoid valve to it. Two it is gravity fed. So on this incoming water line here there's only two and a half pounds of pressure. That means the tank that supplies the water above this line is about 12 feet up in the air. And this is a compound gauge. I mean, it, it reads a vacuum and a positive pressure. And right there where the dial is right now, that's right about zero PSI. And actually it's reading two and a half PSI. Zero is right next to it about where my arrow is. So it has two and a half PSI. Here is a ball valve that is used you know, it's, it's normally open all the time, and it's used to isolate the system during repair. So if you just had gotten done repairing the system, this ball valve would be closed, and this ball valve would be closed. This is the discharge line going out to the valves and the nozzles, and you want to close that to make sure that water from that side of the system does not go and bleed out and bleed onto the floor while you're servicing it. So both of these would be closed during service. So if you're putting this back into service, you would take this plug that I showed you a little while ago and loosen it and take it out. And then you would take this valve and you'd start to crack it until you got some flow out of it. Now, since it's only two and a half PSI, not a lot of water is not going to go through here real fast, which is an advantage so it doesn't splash all over the place. So you open up this valve and you wait a few seconds and pretty soon you start hearing some bubbling and some gurgling come out of that. And all of a sudden you'll have a, a solid column of water. At that time you take the screw and you put it back in and tighten it back down. Now that doesn't mean all the water out of it, but it's pretty close. It's, it's good enough. Ideally is to make an adapter that would go on here to a little hose hose into a bucket and you'd bleed for a while. And if you did that, you'd s start to see little air bubbles that would continue to come out for a minute or so, and then it would be a solid column of water. But just bleeding it out like we talked about, opening this valve up and, and letting, letting it come out through the bleed port, that's getting a lot of the air out of the system, and there's really not much left over, so it, it's pretty much fine that way.
So that's taken care of the incoming line. We really haven't, haven't done anything for the discharge line that goes out here to the discharge or this bypass line that goes up here. Now, depending on how far you've serviced this system depends on how much we've got to bleed. And what I mean by that is, did you take this regulator apart enough where this line got opened up? And did you take this, uh, when you take this discharge line, did it have a check valve on it or did it not? And where did you take it apart? So for this particular system, the only really way to get it apart is to loosen this compression nut right here. And once I take that compression nut off of there, this line comes off and the water will come out of that line. You really cannot take it apart very easily here because there's no compression fittings. These are all NPT fittings to uh, take it apart before this T and leave the check valve intact. But if there was a compression fitting in here and this check valve is intact, well then everything would be saved within this line here and you wouldn't have to do much bleeding. But this on this system, we had to take this nut off here when we serviced it to get at some of this other stuff. And up here on this bypass line, we can't see it. There's a quick connect fitting that we took off to break apart that side of, of the system. So in essence, we bled all the water out of this line and we bled all the water out of the, of the bypass line. Now in this particular case, the bypass line doesn't really matter that much, whether it's got air in it, because this bypass line goes back up to the holding tank, 12 feet in the air. So it theoretically is going to bleed itself out. It goes to the top side of the tank and discharges itself back into the water tank. And then that basically bleeds it out when you bleeds the air out when you start up. When we get to some other systems, the discharge line does not go back into a tank. It actually goes back into the input side of the water line. So this line right here would go back and let's say go back just past this valve right into here. That's an example. And we will have to get the air out of that uh, as much as we can to successfully bleed all the air. Because if this is a bypass line and there's air in it, it'll go right back into the input line and come back around here and into the pump again. So we, we would want to bleed this line. But again, in this case, it goes back up to the holding tank. We're not concerned about it. Now on the discharge, we're concerned about it, but really not heavily concerned about it. Because on the discharge, we're not going back into the suction side of the pump at all. It's going out into the system. So our biggest concern on bleeding this out is to get the air or any air that, that could come back into the suction side of this pump, pump to keep uh, water within the pump all the time to keep the lubrication up so we don't damage the pump. But it is a wise idea to bleed the air out of the system, out of the discharge line, because we really don't want any excess air going into the line that has the nozzles and the valves in it. It's all right, but uh, let's just say at this point we want to bleed the air out of this, out of this dish li discharge line as much as we can. And that's true with startup. Uh, if we cover startup of this particular system, we want to make sure we bleed all the air out of the system past this valve and all the way through uh, to the valves and to the nozzles to get air out of, uh, out of the lines completely. Or should we say the best we can get the air out of it? And I'll explain real quickly uh, whether you understand it or not is uh, you know, your, your understanding, but air acts as a cushion that would slow the, the pressure from rising within this system when the pump starts. If this pump starts, starts rotating, starts pushing water through here, well, if we've got a bunch of air in there, we've got to compress all that air before this gauge right here will rise up to the desired print pressure. If we don't have any air within the system at all when this pump starts, you're pumping water, all water, and the pressure will rise, rise quite rise quite quickly to the desired pressure we want. So again, we don't want air because it slows the rise of pressure through the system. And again, that's on startup, but we're our example right here is that we're repairing or replacing this pump. So this valve right here has been closed. So the next question is, how do we bleed this discharge line? If you recall, this valve is turned off, so none of the water from lines out to the nozzles themselves has bled down. What we have to do is just bleed this short little piece of discharge line. 
And what I do is I start the pump, uh, slowly start the pump in a controlled fashion. And then, and before I start the pump, I crack this nut right here on the ball valve. And so when I slowly start the pump, the pump starts to pump water through this line and, it, and the air gets bleeds out through this nut. And then as soon as we get a little water that comes out, I, uh, I tighten that nut back down. Now that's not going to get all the air out of it. If the water slowly goes through this line and tries to push all the air out, it doesn't get it all out, basically because it's slowing, going so slow. As it goes through here, uh, it becomes layered. You know, it's probably fine up to here, but then the water starts to layer on the lower side and the air starts to layer on the upper side and we get, start to get a little leak of water here and I close the nut but there's still a kind of a little layer of air that's still within that line. But we tried, we got a lot of it out. So the next question is, is how do we start the pump in a controlled fashion to do what I just explained? And in order to do that, we have to override the variable frequency drive. So that brings up the next point. This motor is controlled by a variable frequency drive, meaning this motor can change speed depending on the demand that the nozzles or that the building automation system calls for. So the variable frequency drive is set up to be controlled by the building automation system. And what we have to do is reconfigure the variable frequency drive to put it in manual operation so we, so we can slowly start this motor and bleed the air out of the system. And that's what I'm going to show you next. You know, on second thought, I decided I'm not going to show you how to set up the variable frequency drive in this particular video. I'm going to make it its own separate video because that operation of putting it in, in manual operation applies to many other videos. Oh, maybe I shouldn't say many other videos, but other, other videos that will have to, that will deal with startup and bleeding of the system and then repair and replacement of some other pump configurations. So I'm going to conclude this video with a little recap of what we just talked about. So the video started with this pump being replaced and what the video is about is is bleeding the air out of these lines to get the system back in operation. We bled the input line first to bleed all the air out of the pump which which is which is the most important thing we want to make sure there's water within this pump and then we were going to start the pump and bleed the air out of this discharge line up to this nut uh, we had the nut open we cracked it air uh, air came out then water came out we closed the nut again this ball valve was closed and when we started the pump uh, after we bled the air out pressure rised within this system and then this bypass line kicked in and this is something we haven't talked about yet this bypass pressure regulator kicked in at around 950 psi and it started discharging water through this line and up to the tank uh, where the uh, bypass line goes back into the holding tank above the system so once that's that's done you should be able to put the system back online You'll probably hear a little bit of noise uh, come out of this pump because there is a little bit of air here and there. But then after a minute or two, it'll quiet down. And then after four or five minutes, it'll become a little bit quieter yet. And it should run uh, uh, without any noise after that. So that concludes this video. And uh, next I'm going to make a video on how to override the VFD into manual operation. Thank you very much.